Hey guys, this is my second entry into the DFW Nerd Night competition. And uh, I'm just going to show off the uh, prototype that I have, use, have so far. So my uh, kind of angle in this competition would be to uh, look at the components and really hash out some interesting mechanics out of it instead of focusing on theme that much. And then later on I'll paste on something that I feel is relevant to the mechanics that I've created. And since the components are so restrictive, I feel like this is the way to go instead of going with theme first and then trying to make a game out of it. So this is a themeless game so far, but I will explain the uh, mechanics that I have in play. So the components that I'll be using is the dices, the panda, a couple cards, I don't know how many yet, probably around 40, all the different discs, which is five of them, all the cubes in the same colors, and a card which would then act as a player board. Right now I'm using parade cards as my uh, demo, kind of like testing engine. However, I'll probably try to uh, scale down the numbers from around one to three and uh, add some new cards that would affect the game. So what is this game? The goal of the game is to actually balance out and make a lot of zeros. And let me t show you what I mean. So on your turn you will be playing cards into either the plus side or the minus side. So over here I play a uh, two over here, but a five over here, and to balance it out, I need to get three, a value of three in here, to then cancel it out to make zero. And this could be done by, for example, adding a two and a one. At this point, I have balanced, and what do I do? I, uh, on my turn, it is balanced, and then what happens is that you can take one card from your hand and then stash it away like so. And this will act as more points at the end. And once you have balanced something, you take all the cards, you look at the different colors that it is compromised of. So here it is compromised of a red, yellow, purple, and black. You go over to the scale over here and you increase all of those by one. Red, yellow, purple, and black. And what this signifies is that right now the value of those colors have gone up and it directly correlates to your stash over here. So every red card that I have in my stash right now is worth one point over there. And if I play more uh, red cards in my balancing area, what happens is that the red keeps on increasing and the value of the stashed away red card also increases. Now you're asking, Paul, how do I play cards into this plus and minus section and is it really that easy to just play it like you just did? Well, then we'll be looking at this other part over here that uh, indicates a plus side and a minus side and a specific number. So at the beginning of the game you take a die and you roll until you don't get a panda and at the number four you place the panda. So this panda will keep on moving each time you roll a panda. So if I roll one more panda it goes over here. If I roll double panda heads like so it moves from here down over here and then up over here. So it just keeps on cycling. And the panda is special because it indicates uh, the second card you, you can play, but I'm not going to get ahead of myself. So let's talk about how you play cards into the stash. You can play one card into the stash that is dictated by all of these different discs over here. So over here it says that you can play a red card into the minus section. You can play a black card into the minus section. You can play a blue card into the minus section. 
you can play a uh, yellow card into the plus section, and you can play a purple card into the plus section. So these values fluctuate whenever you take your turn. So let's say I roll my dice over here. I get a 1 and a 2. So over here I look and I move the disc to the opposite side. Over here I got a 2, so this disc also moves. Suddenly all the red cards can be put into the plus side. Same with the black cards. So that is the first card that I can play down. It is dictated by the scale over here. Now the second card that I can play is dictated by the panda. So the panda is right now in front of the black disc over here. And what this means is that I can either play a number 2 card down or any black card down. And this is on either side. It does not have to be uh, plus or minus specific. So any black cards or any cards with a numerical value of 2 I can play into the plus or minus side. That is the basic mechanics that I've been playing around with. I feel like I still need to work with the synergies of the cards with the scale over here. It might be too many like colors to look into. I'm not fully sure yet, but we'll see. I probably also want to have some wild card, uh, like unique cards that, for example, say copy the previous card that you placed down on the same row. So let's say if this was the special card, it would copy the 4 over here. So this would also be a 4, like so. Maybe some cards that are color, uh, like a rainbow color, so you can play it uh, from any pile. Maybe uh, cards will just range from 1 to 3. I'm not too sure yet. But uh, these are things that I need to play test and hash out and try to kind of like hone in on the values that I want. But as for general gameplay, I'm quite satisfied with how it works. And I, I feel like the scoring mechanic, which is the main crux of it, which is to balance these things, is quite interesting and nifty. And I've really been uh, pushing that just to see what I can get out of it. So yeah, that is my second vlog. Uh, I hope you like it. We'll see what happens. I still have a good uh, 15 days to go, and uh, yeah.